Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Nicole Barton. I have been the volunteer and events coordinator at Cambridge Carbon Footprint for the last 10 years. Um, but I think in a way more importantly than that is, well, for me, is that I'm, I volunteer, um, which just keeps, helps me keep grounded, I think, when I sort of talk about the theory of volunteering and engaging. Um, at the moment, and, and I, I volunteer along with Sue in the village, um, I've been volunteering with my husband to cut hedgehog holes for the last few years. Uh, we're making a hedgehog super highway um, that connects people's gardens so that hogs don't have to go onto the road and get squashed. Um, and then I teamed up with Sue, who runs the brownies groups, and she engaged with brownies, who engaged their street, street by street. And so we built a big map. Um, also involved in his Nimping Sustainability Group. Um, but like many other places over COVID, a lot of energy was lost. Obviously, people you know didn't go along to meetings for a couple of years. So like many, we're in the stages of just trying to build that energy up again. Um, yeah. So I have been, I'm a member of the Institute for Advanced Volunteer Managers. I worked at Friends of the Earth head office for eight years, um, translating their sort of national campaigns down to a local level. Um, and I worked for CS Community Service Volunteers Consulting that was about um, getting people volunteer in so-called hard to reach communities. Uh, so next slide, please. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's one thing, there's something that's sort of kept me motivated and excited about working volunteers. I absolutely love working volunteers. I get to work with incredible people. I work with British Antarctic survey scientists, community artists, people that have like retrofitted their homes, just regular people who want to do something, helps keep me really positive working with other people who want to do good things because it's just really, it gives you energy to be with other people that want to do stuff, even if everything seems a bit bleak. Um, this is Time Out. I don't know if any of you remember Time Out. is a listings magazine in London and um, they had Guy Ritchie was the guest editor. And um, I got picked to be in the, the magazine as, as Revenge of the Outsider. Um, Guest editor Guy Ritchie heads up a celebration of London's rebels. I don't really think of myself particularly as a rebel, but um, I said then, and I still think this now, that volunteering and engaging people in volunteering is about helping ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Um, so if I think about my own life, so the most extraordinary things I've done have been as a volunteer. I have an aviary in my garden and I rescue woodpeckers and red-legged partridges. And it, yeah, it's just something I would never do normally. Uh, my husband uh, takes a, a rickshaw out with people from an old people's home every Friday afternoon and he dresses up as Father Christmas. So it just gets to like do extraordinary things. So um, I think it's about making people see that they can do extraordinary things um, outside of their working lives and stuff. Next one. Uh, so this is another person who's really inspired me over the years. Um, so when I work for community service volunteers, um, she ran the organization and she was very, very fiery and very passionate. And um, she just said that um, society change can be brought about by bridging the gap between the huge needs that exist in society and people's need to feel valued, useful and empowered to have an impact on the things that they care about. So there's so many needs in society and lots of people with time and energy and the volunteering is about bringing those two things together. So I'm just saying this because it's just framing why I still feel passionate about it. Um, and she said that most, she thought most things could be achieved, you know, if you just put your mind to it and stuff. And she said, let those who say it can't be done, let those of us who are doing it, get on with it. Um, and she was very forthright. And I kind of, not everyone liked her because she was very, and, and but the, one of the most important things she said was, it's all about people, Nicole. And I still think that, you know, it, volunteering is all about people. And I think it's about listening to their motivation and interest the relationships that you have with them and feel, helping them feel like they're making a difference and enjoying themselves. I think quite often we get caught up in, oh, I've got this mission. You know, I need to make a hedgehog super highway in Hisson Impington. And you just kind of forget that, you know, people are giving up their free time. They need to come out and enjoy themselves. They need to feel like they're making a difference. You can get very focused on the goal without actually thinking about your main ingredient, which is people's energy. Um, I think we often find that money is not the thing that blocks most projects from succeeding. It's energy and it's the energy that people bring with them. So focusing on the people side of your volunteers is really, really important. 
Next one. Okay, so who are all these people? So people often say there's a real shortage of volunteers. I, you know, I can't get anyone to get involved and stuff. But um, statistically, and all the research says that 1% uh, of any population will become leaders. They will want to take the leadership role. And then another 9% will come and do things if you ask them. You know, so we ran a swish at the weekend here in Histon. Um, we had 40 volunteers and you know, that they, so they're people that will come for one-offs when asked. If you're really clear about what the ask is, you know, you have the ambition. And then we had a, a Zoom meeting for volunteers in advance. They got to meet each other. So they knew each other when they got into the room. And then, you know, the roles for the day were clearly laid out. So that might have been the 9% that came along and helped on the day. So your 1% will be leaders, 9% will be helpers, and the rest won't do anything. And I think, that's fine in a way, because I think you can feel, oh, why is no one getting involved? Actually, most people won't get involved. And it's nothing to do with you. It's not your fault. It's not your personality or it's not that your project's not good enough. It's just that statistically, most people won't get involved. But there probably will be enough people in Rampton or wherever you are that will get involved if you sort of follow the, the trend for 1% and 9%. Next one, please, Alice. So people think, well, why, why doesn't anyone come along to this? You know, it's such a good project. And um, there's two key reasons that people don't want to volunteer in the first place. And one is that uh, nobody asks them. That is it. It's just as simple as that. So just get out and ask as many people as you can. Uh, and then you'll, you know, you'll immediately tick boxes. Um, number two reason, I don't know if anyone can guess what this picture represents. But the number two reason is people don't want to get sucked in. And this is really, really key. People think that if they volunteer a few once or come along once, that's it. You know, they're never going to have a free evening ever again. And, uh, you know, they'll just get sucked in and they won't be able to get out of it. Um, so there's some strategies to avoid sort of number two that I'm going to go into. Um, and that involves being sort of very quite specific about why you want people to be involved. Next one, please, Alice. Okay. So if you need a little group of people in your village, um, you need to think about these. It's called the three R's of volunteer management. So your recruitment, your retention, and your reward. So getting people to come on board is much easier than retaining them. I think we all would recognize that. Um, so the first thing you really need to think about is before you start the recruitment is how are you gonna retain these people? Um, in general, people are time poor. And if their skills and interests don't match the tasks that you're giving them, if they're not enjoying what they're doing, and if they feel it's not making a difference, they will stop. They'll just stop coming. If you've got a rainy Wednesday evening and you're tucked up watching EastEnders or something and you think, oh, I've got to go to that committee meeting and it's a bit, oh, I don't really like, you know, I'm not so keen on the people and it's all a bit disorganised and people don't really know what's happening and they're not that welcoming when I arrive. You're probably just going to keep watching telly and just sort of gradually move away from the group so thinking about people and what makes people feel good when they come along to a meeting and and you know making the best use of their skills is really important so when i say go straight to thinking about retention there are two things that you can do with recruitment before you sort of start thinking while you're thinking about your retention this next slide please is have a look at the year's calendar so you can find these online they're everywhere um and just think about what days throughout the year might chime with your particular project and see if you can hook onto those days it's much easier to go along and have a stall an event that's already running than run your whole own event so see if there's any key dates um that you could use to recruit people to your project um, through the year um and the next slide and the next one is, yeah, we can get so busy thinking about what projects we want to do, say in a village, you know, we want his limping to become more green when we want to do this, this and this. Well, have we actually asked his and Nimpington what green things they would like to do? Is it transport? Is it food project? Is it a hedgehog project? Or is it a woodpecker project? You know, actually doing a little survey could be really simple. If you have a local newsletter or you have a local Facebook group, you could just do a simple Google form put it online and, and, you know, ask people what they're actually interested in, because then you're obviously going to be much more likely to uh, build a project that there's actually interest in. 
And obviously when you get the survey feedback, feedback to the community, what people have said they're interested in. Um, next one, please. Is there any questions? <laughs> How to keep going? So uh, the next one is the second R is the retention. So as sort of Sandy and Annie had said, you know, do agree an overarching vision just because it helps people understand what you're about and what you want to achieve. Um, and then if you can try and create some role descriptions and that's just a really good way of helping people see how they're going to fit into your group and what you want to achieve. People don't like to come along to something they're not, not sure their skills fit or how long will I need to be engaged or how, is it one hour a week or is it 20 hours a week? So if you create a role description, as many as you can, then that will really help people see how they can fit into your group. Um, so a basic, some role descriptions that you might have um, if you're trying to build up a group in your village or town would be a communications person. So that, yeah, I mean, you can just read the slide yourself. An admin person, really important to keep track of all the signups that you get. Um, yeah, keep and basic records of minutes, handle any donations um, and reporting. Your event organizers, and then you can have a broader, your sort of as and when team. There's people who don't want a particular role, but you know they will come and do the 9% type activities that we talked about earlier. Your, your as and when as people that might stand out and shake in a tin occasionally, or they might bake for you, or give someone a lift, um, or they might be public speakers. Um, and then I think probably the roles for later would be, you know, your treasurer, your fundraiser, your chair, depending on whether you, whether you want to be a constituted group or not. Next one. So this is an example of a role description that we would have at Cambridge Carbon Footprint. It was to, um, it was, it was a, Cambridge Sustainable Fashion Festival intern. So we run a couple of sustainable fashion festivals and we wanted someone to work with us in the office for a, a few months in the lead up. So yeah, it included, you know, your principal function, what do you want to do? Uh, any expenses, where, what's the location? What are the days and hours? Um, and how long is it gonna last for? And then a really importantly, a description of the role. I mean, I know this might seem a lot if you're a group of volunteers, but it is, E worthwhile even thinking about it, even if you can't put it down on paper um and then important to think about what are the benefits that they're going to give to society by volunteering and what might be the benefits to themselves and then you know if there are any particular skills or qualifications that you need then obviously to include those next one so this is an example of how we um started the recruitment for history and sustainability group probably about five or six years ago, um, we wanted to raise awareness of sustainability in the village. So we started off with a film called Dema, which means tomorrow. And it was just a really inspiring film from all around the world about different communities that were doing different things for a sort of greener, more sustainable future. And I thought it may be a bit radical for Histon, and, um, but actually 165 people turned out to watch the film. Um, and the important thing was that after the film and people came out, we captured their names and we had a sign up list and we had some ideas about what we wanted to do. Um, we quickly followed that film up with a vegan feast um, just in the local church hall. Um, and people just sat down at long tables and met each other and got to know each other and yeah, hopefully got to like each other and thought this might be a group of people that do stuff and want to, you know, I want to meet these people and do stuff together with them. So it was like scheduling out a list of things. So not just having the film and then boom, drop it, you know, and everyone goes, oh, that was a good film and go off and get on with their normal lives, but having like a schedule of events to help keep their interest peaked. So after the vegan feast, we had a meeting up in a little room where we, there was about, I think 25 people came wanting to get involved with the group. And we said, well, what do you want to do? And they just had, we had flip charts all around the wall and people just put headings and then said, if you want to join in with the activity, you know, just put a dot and leave your contact details. And it went from there. And um, I think it, it worked really, really well. Next one. Okay. And then obviously, you know, do the thank yous. And uh, to retain, meet in nice settings. Don't meet in a cold, dank, dark hall somewhere. 
you know, meet in the pub if that's suitable in the community or, you know, meet somewhere that's nice to go out to. It's going back to this thing. If you're tucked up on the sofa on a Wednesday evening, it's nice to go out somewhere a bit nice. Um, always obviously be friendly and welcoming. You can have a welcomer in your group. We use welcomers more and more at our events. Um, just that one person is assigned to do the welcoming. And it just makes such a difference. It means when you're all busy, there's one person, their job is just to welcome people and make them feel um, welcome. Um, I think the thing I've learned over the many, many years is if there's no energy, just don't go with it. Um, other people might disagree, but these people are giving their time for free. So if there isn't any energy, you will literally be you know, pushing the ball uphill. So go with the energy and drop the things where there is no energy. Um, always do as much public recognition as you can and private recognition. So, you know, after, you know, after say the swish we had in Histon, I do a long so email with some nice pictures on the Facebook group that has 5,000 members. And, you know, just say, this is what we raised. This is how many people came. This is the weight of the clothes that we swapped. So they're getting that sort of public recognition for what they've done. It's quite easy to sweep, you know, so tired after an event that you just, uh, you know, you just kind of, collapse or move on to the next event but if you don't do really good thank yous you'll you'll feel it and have some socials along the you know it is all about people and people wanting to make connections with others and, and be with like-minded people so build in you know summer social winter social or just time for you to meet as people and celebrate achievements not just sort of lur lurching from one kind of worthy thing to the next uh yeah and share positive feedback that's something we do with the repair cafes um we take the positive comments we've had from people who've had stuff repaired and we share them with the repairers and it's just, just nice for them because otherwise they don't see the paperwork, they don't see that feedback, um, so we always share. 